There's a kind of hush all over the world tonight. <laughs> After the chitty chattering and everything like that, then suddenly just a bit of peace and quiet. Wonderful. Lovely to see you all today. Waiting my beloved to sit down. Send it to Effie. Effie, it's good to see you again. Wonderful. Must I ring the bell there, darling? <laughs> no, it's nice to see you up and about in the Kiel West Hall. It's really super. And then uh, we've got Leo, Florence, and Lisa with us today. Lord bless you. Trust that you'll enjoy our service. You're welcome here. And uh, we're very warm people. And we pray that you'll feel at home. And uh, yeah, it's good to see you. Wonderful. Welcome to our musicians. We couldn't do without you. <laughs> yeah, well, just a few of us on the ground. But never mind. The Lord is good. And he says, we're two or three gathered in my name. There am I in the midst. And we can be certain of that. Because he's welcome here. And Holy Spirit, you're welcome here too. Um, Friday morning is our ladies' meeting. at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. The ladies' prayer meeting. And uh, next Sunday, Sunday school at Adult Bible class at 9 o'clock. And the worship service is at 10.30 a.m. And once again, we have Pastor Rory was coming minister to us. So we look forward to that. The third part. Buckle up. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially after the last one. <clears throat> yeah, make sure you prayed up and buckled up. And, uh, isn't it wonderful what God did? Amen. Really wonderful. It was wonderful indeed. Not just because of the man there, mm. but because the Holy Spirit Amen. knew. Amen. And the power of God was in evidence. us. And that's what we want. That's what we want to see. God is good. God is good. And then I presume Eric is meeting next Sunday at 5.30 as usual. That's great. Okay. Um, nothing else to worry about now? No? No. One thing I do want to mention, and you'll see it in, uh, it's been in the news later and so on. I'm not sure if it's in this, I don't know if it's in this one. We've got a grocery cover here that is a ministry to people that are in need. They don't have food, they're battling in one way or another. And we'd like to encourage you to be a part of that ministry. There's a list up on the, the, the wall there, uh, opposite the notice board. Um, if you have a look there, if you feel that you'd like to give, and you're doing it as unto the Lord, and the Lord will bless you for doing it. I'm grateful to those that, that do give and those that contribute by way of putting money into the church account, specifically for the grocery cupboard. And through that, we're able to purchase groceries and so on for those that are in need. So I'd encourage you to be a part of the ministry. I'd encourage you to, to do it as unto the Lord. And we know that the Lord will, will bless you. Lovely, were you waving, waving your hand? Yes. And doesn't have to be prepared. It's just two items. Yeah. Everything is a prepared. Did you hear that? Just a few small things, that's fine. You don't have to come with great big piles, although that would be nice. <laughs> but what you can get, give as unto the Lord. 
and you know that the Lord will bless you for it. Okay, I've chosen some choruses this morning. The first one, um, I don't know if you remember it, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Do you know? Or all of you know? Because we're going to sing it as a round. Maybe we could just sing it through once, and then it did well. We'll split you up for the round. Okay. Can, can Alec lead our round? Yes, please. <laughs> Alec, you ready? Go, I'll bring give you a microphone. <laughs> Goes like this. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given us. Okay, so what are we going to be split up? Shall we start this side first? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Sorry, my voice. <coughs> uh, it always happens when I'm up here, you know. I never have a problem when I'm playing guitar. Uh, okay, so we're going to start on this side, and then we sing up to, uh, or this side will just carry on singing, and then I'll start you when it's time, it's kind of halfway through. Okay, ready? Okay, side A. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. You know, one day we're going to see him. He's going to come for us, or we're going to go there. When he calls us to us, or when he comes in the clouds, I'd like to see him coming in the clouds. I'd like to be called up. Up, up, up there. I actually, we had a friend, <laughs> a friend who had a dream about Jill and, Mark and I, and she dreamt that. There was a ladder going up to heaven, and people were going up, and she would say, come on, come up, and come up. No, we said, we've got to have our tea first. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, come <laughs> 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 
Uh, that was a true dream. <laughs> I know you like our team. <laughs> yeah. But by and by, we're going to see the king. Amen. Yeah. 
I just want to say thank you. You know, we've been praying for Talon Weaver, Yadish Dish. Um, the other day, just before the end of the month, um, she's immigrated to New Zealand. And the other day, um, she heard that the school had been sold over there in New Zealand. But Somebody else had taken over the school and they were willing to take her over. Oh, and there was such a flat because now she's got to get her visas all sorted out again and whatever. But praise God, they've got their ticket in their hand now. They'll be leaving immigrated on the 18th of April. And uh, I just want to thank God for his uh, loving care and for going into this situation for her and her family. And I just want to pray for, uh, that you all pray for my sister, the next. Uh, you know, she looked after her husband for two years while he was ill. Now all of a sudden there's not that to do anymore. And she's like a little bit lost. And she's still now, after three months or so, still crying such a lot. And I went there yesterday, but I just felt I had to go to her yesterday. And she was so sore because she can't handle uh, on a Saturday being alone because she always had some company. Now, now she's got nobody. So the much time as I can give to her, I give to her and I praise God that I'm able to do that for her. I just want to give the Lord thanks for his goodness, his mercy, his provision. Two years ago, we all know what COVID was doing, and I got retrenched from my own company. <laughs> 
The only company that I started was destroyed. But if you ever wonder if Jesus still does the same miracles that he did for the widow and her child, when Elijah came there and said, please feed me, and she said, no, I've just got enough cake flour and oil to make me two cakes and we're going to eat it and die. And he said, but if you feed me, God will supply your need. And it never ran out for three years. I can tell you, he's the same God. And I'm grateful. If I see how he has directed and how he has made those ends meet when you think they cannot meet, but they meet. And Claude preached here a long time back and he said, first obedience, then blessing. And through all that time, as God has provided, we've made sure we tithe. Not because I bargained with God, but that's, if you really want to understand worship, bring that offering to Him every month. Then you know what worship is. Because the tithe is a worship. And when we worship and serve this wonderful Savior of ours, He never, ever fails. Two years ago, we looked at disaster in our face. And yet, He sustained and I had nine people work for me for over a year with no contract. And God provided. They got paid late some months, but they got paid. And that which I was short on, God provided. He's a wonderful Savior, friends. And thank you for being here in the fellowship and to see the youth here. He's just so worthy to be praised. And I want to stand here and thank him for the last two years. I have watched that cruise of oil and that cake of flour. And God has provided abundantly and wonderfully because he is faithful. He is faithful. And he's a wonderful Savior. We're serving the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. There you were bouncing up and down in your seat, I see. <laughs> um, you know, we hear about COVID and how it takes so many people. And um, for me, COVID was great because, sorry, you hear me out. Um, I've been housebound for many years. And when COVID happened, I all of a sudden had company. And uh, anyway, this. This Friday, I went with my daughter and my sister-in-law to go wedding shopping. <clears throat> and my daughter's getting married in May. And we went to the China market there by Crown Mines. And a couple of things happened. What really struck me was in an area that used to have maybe 70 stores uh, that were packed to the brim, there were maybe 10 open in an entire building. And then we thought, no, maybe this is this China Mall that's like this. Let's go to another one. And we went there, and it was the, the smarter one that had hundreds of shops. And we found only 10 open. And in my spirit, I just felt like, wow, wow. We've had tough times. We've had times where we go, Lord, Lord, where are you? But not once have we not been able to pull a pay bill or be able to eat. And I just want to give God all the glory for that. And then the other thing, I just want to tell you how awesome God is. He, he knows everything that's going on in you. I couldn't walk, um, not much at all, before the surgery I had in June. And if I, you know, I managed to walk a couple of hundred meters once or twice a week, and that's it. And yeah, I was with two, well, my daughter's young, and my sister-in-law was very young in spirit. And we were walking those shops about like two kilometers. And I was praying severely under my breath, like, Lord, Lord, Lord. And eventually I was getting exhausted. I said, like, they didn't hear me, but I said, Lord, you need to direct me. You need to show me where these linen dresses are because I'm exhausted. <laughs> and immediately I felt, turn right. 
I was like, we need to go right. And then, what do you mean you need? No, we need to go right. And we turned right and we found the, the, the dresses. And um, then we went to go and find her shoes. And we were standing in the school and the guy said, the shoe's here. I said, your shoe is here. And uh, anyway, to cut a long story short, we found the shoe here. You know, he's in, small, in the small things too. And I'm just giving him all the glory. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, it was about a week and a half ago, um, my sister collapsed and she ended up in a coma. And they discovered that the right side of her heart is severely damaged. Um, and as a result of that, she couldn't expel CO2. Um, she was put onto a ventilator and um, they had to keep her sedated because she just wanted to pull out all the pipes because she was so uncomfortable. Um, and it was in this week um, that they removed the ventilator and they put a pipe into, directly into her trachea. And ever since then, she's just been going from strength to strength. So I'd just like to thank everybody that prayed for her. Um, God is good all the time. And um, thank you for all your prayers. And yesterday she breathed for an hour on her own. And so today they're going to push for two hours. So thank you very much. And I'd just like to praise God and thank him for his mercy. And being with her all the time. She said, to, I actually video called with her on Friday. And she said to me, God gave me a huge battle. But I said to him, never left your son. He was with you all the time. So thank you for your prayers. Dennis. Father, we pray for Dennis again today. As a congregation, we lift her up before you. And we're asking, Lord, that you'd reach down and touch her. Heal her completely, Lord. Amen. That she's able to breathe on her own totally without any assistance whatsoever. And we thank you for what you've done thus far, Lord. But we're trusting you and looking to you for complete healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our sister Rona DC, as I've set out on the prayer thing, she was released from hospital on Friday and is in frail care at Fairland Village. And she was really chirpy when we saw her on Friday and we heard on, was it later that you were the next day that She's been up and talking to people and so on. So God is strengthening her and, and healing her. We give God thanks for that. And Sister Pushpa, um, she's still not well. Still got a, a flu or the leftovers of that. So just remember her in prayer. She's had her two sisters up from Durban to stay with her and visit her, which has been a blessing to her, I'm sure. So we thank God for that. And Sister Dorothy, I suppose we haven't heard anything more, that she's hoping to come out this weekend. Was that the latest job? So just continue to remember them in prayer, if you would, and uh, yeah, spare them up before the Lord. All right, nobody else? Okay. Leanne, I know you've got your little one on the table. Would you take up the offering for us? Thanks.
can not do. We thank you for everything, Lord Jesus. It's been and it is going to be a wonderful <coughs> and glorious day. And you, Lord Jesus, thank you for blessing us and thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come to you. No, I'll come to you. <laughs> okay, up here. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> I must look for that question. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, you know, I've been following on Facebook this business with Russia. And I just want to pray to thank God this morning. The way that he has been helping the great Ukrainians. I don't know if you looked it up or whatever it is. But can I just tell you, God is with them. Amen. The pastor's son was with the Ukrainian soldiers and he phoned his father and says, please get people to pray. We are facing this Russian army tomorrow and we don't know if we're going to make it. They couldn't get through on cell phones because uh, Putin took all the cell phone business away. But the millionaire from America sent satellites up so they could use their cell phones. So he phoned his father and the prayer groups went out. I must tell you this, brothers. Prayer groups go out for, from this pastor's church and everywhere else. And he says they were suddenly during the night the most terrible flesh, uh, you know, like a, almost like a, a lightning, and it lit up the whole area where the Russian army was, and the thing, and when they went there the next morning to fight, all the, the tanks were destroyed, all the men were dead, the, the weapons were just completely annihilated. This is my God. You can say amen, brothers and sisters. It's God is good and He's using this in a very, very fantastic way. And I want to thank God this morning. I'm following this because it is what God is doing. You call upon the Lord and He will help you. Anyway, God will help you, brothers and sisters. The one other thing is happening is this quickly. The Russian army went into a, 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 a Ukrainian village. And they had the Ukrainian flags all over And they said, no, that's uh, spoilers of war. So they took the flags off and they put it onto their tanks. And then they went off. But they met their own tanks who thought they were Ukrainians. <laughs> and they destroyed them. Isn't this God? We, you know, honestly, when I listen to what is happening there, last night on the news says that Ukraine shot down 79 of Russia's airplanes. This is great, brothers and sisters. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for that testimony as well. Our God is great. I'm going to sing another hymn, and then I'll share with you. Father, one note. Who can share the heart like Jesus?
in chapter 12. 1 Corinthians 12, we're reading from verse 12. For as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not of the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not of the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body, uh, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing? 
If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now God has set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. Just so far. Tell me, do you find the different sounds and smells bring back certain memories to you? The sound of wind in the pine trees. And that takes me back to Zimbabwe. When we were caravanning at the Nikinyangombi campsite in Inyanga. <laughs> Eric and Sandy were with The pine trees were so and of course, when it rains on the caravan roof, that's a different matter. But anyway, <laughs> the sound of rain falling on the roof when you're tucked up in bed. Did you notice that this morning when the rain started to fall? The sound of silence, heavenly, when there are no dogs barking across the road, <laughs> cars zooming along the freeway. Yeah. And there are smells that make one feel real good. The smell of freshly mown grass for example. Especially yesterday when we had a little rain combined with the garden of mowing the lawn. It was wonderful. You know, there's a newness and a wholesome feeling about that. The smell of a wood fire, either burning in a fireplace on a winter's night or sitting around one in the bush. The smell of new thatch. What a nice smell it is. And thatch after the rain also has a particular smell. I remember when I opened, once I opened our breakfast and immediately I was in London in my late father-in-law's home. I thought of shopping for bread there and having a choice of so many varieties of bread. That was all in a second that I remember. Many years ago we were in Clarence and we went to a little general store to get some tennis shoes for our grandson. The minute I walked in, the smell took me back to a general store in Guerlain, or where they call it now, in Rhodesia or Zimbabwe. And that general store is called Belita's Brother. It wouldn't surprise me if it's still there. <laughs> this little store in Clarence even has shirts, jerseys, and all sorts hanging from the ceiling, blankets, tackies, and so on. But in my mind's eye, I could see the army style great coats. Pots and pans, raincoats, blankets, bicycles, bicycle tires, and tubes, and I don't know what else. In Belita's Brothers. Whatever you wanted, you could go there and find it. Amazing, isn't it? How these memories come back. And the thing is that it happens so quickly, and when you least expect it. There's a smell of glycerine and cucumber, which I can only remember now because I, I've never seen it in the shops. But it reminds me of a child watching my father shave, because he always put it on his aftershave. Oh. I love looking around in second-hand bookshop. You like going to second-hand bookshops, don't you? <laughs> Picking up old books and smelling them. Funny thing to do, huh? Eh? I have a watch and clockmaker's handbook that belonged to my grandfather and started in 1896. And it still has, it has that lovely old book smell about it. And, uh, you know, you'll never get that from a kettle. <laughs> <laughs> On Wednesday we were at a hotel, we have been invited for the afternoon, and um, in a bookcase there were some old books, I took one out. There's nothing <laughs> like it. Am I strange? I don't know. I also have an old wooden cigar box that contains my dad's watchmaking tools, and it has a special smell about it, and with that, I could always picture him sitting next to the fireplace with his watchmaker's eyeglass in, fixing a watch or something. I loved that part. And I was grateful to be able to have it after he went to be with the Lord. Funny thing to think about smells and so on. Huh? You know, Christmas Day one year, my beloved gave me this Bible. Because my old one, my first one, was literally falling to pieces. And when I opened the box and took the Bible in my hands, the smell of it 
took me back to that first father that I bought. Still got a smell about it. I, and I walked off to get it saved. And I can picture the Christian bookshop we went into, and I can remember the feeling of holding it, my first Bible, and of reading God's Word, the joy of that, and beginning to understand what it was all about. The smell of the leather and of that particular paper they used. You don't get that paper in normal books. It's only in the Bible. And I started to be thinking that Perhaps times, sometimes we lose that newness of God's word in our lives and in my life too. It's just become a familiar book that we read, that we bring to church, put notes in. And reading it was just that and nothing else. And perhaps it's happened to you, I don't know. And I began to wonder what effect certain smells had on biblical faith and what part smell plays. In God's words, I start to have a look at that. The first instance recorded is in Genesis 8, in verse 20 to 22, when Noah had disembarked from the ark. The first thing he did was to build an altar and offer a sacrifice to God. And this is what's recorded. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. And of course, the rain went again. So this was a smell that really pleased the Lord. And because Noah had obeyed him, and we know that our prayers can, before, can come before the Lord as something sweet too. Psalm 141, penned by David, says in part, let my prayer be set forth thee, that be set before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. And there are a number of faithful prayers in this congregation and elsewhere whose faithfulness in prayer is very sweet to our Heavenly Father. And we see the evidence of that prayer as well. In Revelation 5 8, we read that the four beasts of twenty elders fell down before the Lamb having every one of them hearts and golden vials full of odors, which are the praise of the saints. Something sweet to our heavenly Father. I don't know about you, but I need to cultivate my prayer. I sometimes think I'm doing it right. But in this year, to cultivate it so it becomes a sweet-smelling incense before the Lord. Then there was, of course, a very special holy anointing oil that had a very special smell to the Lord. And he gave specific instructions to Moses in the making of it. It was so special, in fact, that the people were forbidden to copy it, as we read in Exodus 30 from verse 37. And as to the perfume which thou shalt make, you shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. It shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. Whoever shall make life unto them to smell their cheek shall even be cut off from his people. Strong words, eh? How important that oil was and the smell was to the Lord. Now, smells could also lead one astray. Consider our old blind Isaac when he had sent Esau to hunt venison and make him a special meal so he could bless Esau before he died. And what happened to long comes Jacob, covered in the skins of young goats. And he came near and kissed him. And he, that is uh, Isaac, smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. So although his ears heard the voice of Jacob, the smell had convinced him that it was Esau. You know what, you and I, we need to take care that we are absolutely sure of God's leading in something and not be deceived by the right smell, if I can put it like that. I also read in Leviticus that God warned the Israelites about dis disobedience, saying it in part, and I'll make your cities waste, 
and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And I will not smell the savour or the fragrance of your sweet odours. Also in Amos 5, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. God was looking for that right smell, that right evidence of their love and their dedication to Him. So, no matter what they did in bringing peace offerings and burnt offerings, He would not find pleasure in these because of their disobedience. And then I also found that when it comes to those who would serve idols, the Lord had this to say, they have mouths, but they speak not, eyes they have, but they see not, they have ears, but they hear not, noses have they, but they smell not, they have hands, but they handle not, feet have they, but they walk not, neither speak they through their throat. And yet, today people will still go for those isms and idols that are not alive at all, while the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the unknown God whom the Athenians worshipped and Paul declared to them, He is alive and real. Amen. Our Lord Jesus is alive and real today. Smell also had an important part to play in the Song of Solomon, I discovered that being mentioned no less than nine times. So husbands and wives take note. I'm particularly intrigued by chapter 7 verse 8, which says in part, and the smell of thy nose like apples. <laughs> Don't worry, in the, in the New King James Version it says the fragrance of your breath like apples. <laughs> I mentioned at the beginning the smell of the wood fire. Now here's what I mentioned in Daniel, and of course you'll remember the story in Daniel. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Remember they were thrown into the burning fiery furnace? Nor was the hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. What a miraculous event that was. Amen. Not only were they delivered from the fire, but there wasn't even the smell of the fire on them. You just try sitting next to an open fire for a short while, and you'll find the smell of the smoke will be on your clothing and on your skin. How wonderful is God's care of us in situations where maybe we could have been burned and left tainted with the smell of sin. We don't know how God protects us from day to day from things we don't even know about. But He's alive and real and He's doing that for us. But there are also those lovely sweet moments with the Lord as we find in Hosea 14 and verse 5, I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the living and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree, and his smell with fragrance as Lebanon. They that dwell under their shadow shall return. They shall revive as the corn, and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. How special is that? What a blessing is that of God's people. Ephesians 5 verse 2 says, And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice for a sweet smelling savour. Our love for others should be the same. A love that goes beyond affection to self-sacrificing service. And then Philippians 4.18 Philippians 4, 18, which says, But I have all in the balance of Paul. I am full 
having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Whereas the Amplified Version puts it, they are the fragrant odor of an offering and sacrifice which God welcomes and in which He delights. And what did they receive from Epaphroditus? Was money, gifts to assist them and to help them in their service for the Lord. And then finally, speaking of the oneness of the body of Christ, which is you and I in this fellowship, we go back to our reading from 1 Corinthians, where verse 17 says, If the whole body were an eye, we were the hearing. If the whole were hearing, we were the smelling. We each have a special part to play in the body of Christ and in this church. We can't all be the head, or the eyes, or even the nose. But perhaps we can all strive to sense the move of the Holy Spirit in our lives, Amen. and in the services, so that we can smell His sweetness in our worship of Him, and carry that to the world outside. Taste and see that the Lord is good, says yes. Psalm 34. Test him. See him. Let him be evident in your life. There's actually a little chorus that goes with that that says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy is the man that trusteth in Him. Happy is the man that trusteth in Him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He is good. He is good. He is good. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Lord, what a privilege it is to you taste and see that you are good. The Lord in you. The things that we have, the tasting, the seeing, the smelling, the feeling. Lord, we know that you are good. And we pray, Lord, that today as we take your word in, Lord, as we set our hearts to you, to offer you a sweet smelling sacrifice each and every day that will come before you as a sweet smelling odor that Lord others may see and feel and sense your love from us Lord that you'd be glorified and magnified that others would come to know you as Saviour and Lord and in particular, Lord, that our worship of you in this house, as we gather together, would be a sweet smelling come before you, that you would smell it sweet, Lord, our love and our, our sacrifice for you. We bless you today, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. And we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name. Dear wonderful Jesus, Saviour Divine, and He is so, so wonderful. 
Thank you. 